Good afternoon, everyone. Um, first and foremost, welcome to Ken County, to the Ken County Administration, Administration Hub for our community. Uh, we would like to, uh, especially on a beautiful day like this, uh, we want to be brief. So I do want to make sure that we uh, have a chance to speak to one of our wonderful guests here to, to update us on this amazing effort in our Commonwealth. And really, the, uh, the most important thing for any strong community is public safety. And we're going to hear from our key leaders who are making an impact on that every day. As Chris Knockleman, our Kent County Judge Executive, and I want to make sure we, uh, first and foremost, we want to call on some more Commonwealth's brightest and really best uh, public law enforcement officials and making sure that all of the individuals in our community are safe, keeping our families safe, our businesses safe to operate. And really, the, one of the, the best people who can do that is Attorney General Coleman. First and foremost, we want to just simply say anyone who's had a chance to really take more than a moment or two with Attorney General Coleman knows it's just as simple as a fine human being and how grateful for, for his service to this Commonwealth. And in, in particular, of most importance is that it being a national leader in taking on the drug threat and fighting to keep fentanyl out of the Commonwealth and of our region. And I think finally are the positive impact that Attorney General Coleman, in just his first year in office, has made working on the drug threat and fighting to keep fentanyl out of our entire community. So with that, I'd like to call on Attorney General Coleman and thank him so much for his great work. Thank you, Judge Nockelman. I'm, I'm so grateful for the kind words and, and for you hosting today's discussion. I, it's also nice to come home to a degree. I'm pleased that the Attorney General's office is based in this building just a few floors above us. So it is, it is nice to, to join you as a colleague as well in this fight, Judge. This is, this is a dark topic. Uh, no one wants to talk about the horrific exploitation of children, not on a beautiful day, not on any day. Uh, but as law enforcement elected leaders, those that are on my left and my right, these are people who have taken an oath to do just that, to go to the threat to protect our kids. It's exactly for this reason that we're gathered here today to applaud leadership. Leadership matters, full stop. And we have seen an outstanding example of that in this particularly challenging issue. You know, for Representative Stephanie Dietz to step into this space with the support of Senator Chris McDaniel, his heft on the Senate end, with the, the substantive, the anecdotal, with, with the fire in the belly that is your Commonwealth's attorney here, my colleague, uh, Mr. Sanders, I tell you what, this is an incredible team. Again, with fire in the belly to protect our kids. Uh, they make protecting our kids a priority, not just words from a podium, but now in law in our statutes here in the Commonwealth. Uh, now we have additional tools to do just that, to protect our kids, thanks to the leadership on my left and on my right. Representative Dietz's legislation, which passed unanimously, and pause on that for a moment, in this somewhat divisive era, this passed unanimously. That is advocacy, That's, that is leadership, that is heft to be able to accomplish that. Uh, her willingness to stare directly into the face of evil, it, 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 um, the legislation itself is horrific in what it covers, the conduct that it covers. It bans the possession of, and, and you pause, and you almost warn those that are watching this at home to remove kids from the room before we have this conversation. It protects, and uh, it protects against AI-generated child exploitation material, child sexual abuse material, CSAM is an acronym we refer to it. And it also makes very clear that the possession of an item known as a child sex doll, a child sex doll is prevented under our statutes here in the Commonwealth. Uh, these predators that use this technology, that use these dolls to accelerate their activity, uh, they're not just in the shadows. They are here. We fight them. The men and women on my left and my right fight them every day. These tools will make it more effective, make us more effective in this fight. The new law is working. This is not just academic. The law is working. Last month, our colleagues with the Kentucky State Police announced uh, an arrest and, and subsequent prosecution of a subject in Medcalf County, Kentucky, 
for exploitation, including a charge of possession of a child sex doll. It doesn't happen just elsewhere. It happens here, here across our Commonwealth. It's tragic, and the reality is the exploitation isn't new. If you, the violence we see in this Commonwealth isn't new. If you spend time in Mr. Sanders' office as you walk in, as he spent time with me earlier today, you see covering the wall victims, victims of abuse, victims of homicide, victims of violence. The, this conduct is not new, but these tools we're seeing are new. And I'm so proud that this Commonwealth is at the top of the list. We are the tip of the spear, so to speak, in getting ahead of the threat. Incredibly, incredibly pleased because of leadership on my left and my right that we're in that position. Uh, protecting Kentucky's children from exploitation is the job, one of the core priorities of the Attorney General's office. Even before I was sworn in, I announced I was very pleased to create, because of the nature of the threat, create a new position in the Attorney General's office, a Deputy Commissioner for Child Exploitation. And it's a long name, but it was very important that we put the right individual, the right leader in this position, given the gravity of the threat. I was very pleased to appoint the gentleman that will be speaking in just a moment into that role, uh, someone who has spent uh, two decades protecting our kids and the Kentucky State Police. Uh, Deputy Commissioner Merrill brings these decades of experience and leadership in this space as a nationally known expert. We've also recruited, on a bit of a lighter note, we've also recruited a four-legged detective. As you'll see, Officer Charity joined us just a couple of months ago. She is what's known as an ESD, an electronic storage detection dog, one of only a handful, one of only four actually in our commonwealth. Our motto, our culture in the Attorney General's office is zealous collaboration. We look for opportunities like using our, our fellow colleague, four-legged colleague here, to help agencies large and small as we fight this threat. So Deputy Commissioner Merrill will speak in a moment about our, our team's innovative tools and how we are zealously collaborating with agencies across our Commonwealth to track down predators. As I said, it's a dark topic and we would prefer not to talk about it. But my friends, as long as we have leaders like those on my left and my right, and I look out, I see our county attorney, uh, Stacey Tapke here as well. As long as we have leaders, and as you see in these jobs, the longer you do it, you realize that many of those that do this work stand in the back of the room. The cameras aren't covering the back of the room. We have detectives and officers and deputies that do this work every day, and I applaud them, and I'm grateful for their service. But as long as we have men and women of this caliber that are willing to fight in Frankfurt, men and willing men of this caliber to fight here in Kent County or across our Commonwealth, I could not be more optimistic about us pushing back and protecting our kids. And, and with that, Judge Nachman, I think I turn it over to you again, sir. And as Attorney General Coleman referred to, is that State, State, Representative, State Representative Stephanie Dietz is going to make a few comments about uh, her efforts in this area. And in particular, we just want to say thank you to Stephanie Dietz because really, and also short term in serving in Frankfurt, have, has really just been very mature about looking at all the big issues that we're dealing with and making real an impact, real impacts in the lives of the Commonwealth. So Stephanie Dietz, State Representative Stephanie Dietz. Well, thank you. Um, as Attorney General Coleman referenced, we can't do this alone. So this wasn't just me um, running a bill. Uh, it started with uh, Rob Sanders contacting me in 2023 and saying we have a problem. And uh, the bill didn't go anywhere in 23, but then last summer during the interim, picked up where I left off, had it redrafted, and then after the election, I received a telephone call from Attorney General Let Coleman saying this is a priority for me and we spent the interim working with the Kentucky State Police um, with um, Senator McDaniel and so it takes a group effort and when we finished the first draft of the bill Kentucky State Police said can we meet with you and we said we think we can make it a little bit better and and they did with the AI portion so it's a it's a team effort when we do something like this it's a team effort to get your colleagues on board to vote for it it's got to come out of committee it's got to come out of the house and then i could put it in the trusted hands of senator mcdaniel and know that he was going to see this through on the other side um, there's nothing more important than protecting our kids and i know that this is a tool in the toolbox for our law enforcement those on the front lines and for our prosecutors 
So I'm just grateful that we have such a great team that we can work with. And as to um, the point about Metcalf County, when I saw that article, my, my colleague in Metcalf County sent me the article, and I was able to text it to my group and say, we made a difference, because that's the first time that we saw that there had been a charge on possession of a child sex doll. So it really did make a difference, and, and we know that this is going to save children's lives. So thank you. It is very clear when you when you hear of Senator Senator uh, or State Representative I'm sorry Stephanie <laughs> State Representative Deeds comment about this is not only the, the thoughtfulness tough but with humility and compassion another uh, amazing leader in our community Senator Chris McDaniel is doing that as well with impactful legislation for our community and some of the most impactful in the region in modern history Senator McDaniel's work on behalf of families and children made Kenton County and Northern Kentucky a better place to live in, really, for decades to come. Senator McDaniel. Thank you, Judge, and thanks to everybody for being here today. Uh, first of all, uh, Attorney General Coleman, thank you for your leadership and your ongoing diligence in this effort. Uh, Representative Dietz, for uh, your work on it, and uh, obviously uh, has, has been instrumental uh, to our Commonwealth Attorney, Rob Sanders, who first brought this forward. You know, one of the great things about Rob is uh, he doesn't just deal with what is a crime, he deals also with what ought to be a crime. Because when you stop and think about what is the nature of what is a criminal act, it are, it are, it's things that, that take things away from other people, it's things that don't uh, execute on our concept of justice here in the Commonwealth in the United States. And sometimes there are certain things um, via technology or otherwise that simply didn't exist uh, when, when laws were thought of, when the Constitution was thought of, and uh, our Commonwealth Attorney Rob Sanders is absolutely on the forefront of helping us to identify those. So Rob, thank you. And of course to the Budget Review Subcommittee for Justice and Judiciary, Shelley Funky Frohmeyer. Um, no dollars get appropriated inside of the Justice Budget without uh, her, her ongoing help and certainly appreciate everything on this. And you know, the, we, we've heard a lot about the, the mechanics of this bill. We've heard a lot about uh, some of the need for this bill. But at the end of the day, it really boils down to there are unfortunately deviants in society. And those deviants would prey on those who are powerless, those who are innocent, those who are youthful, those who simply don't know what kind of evil does exist in this world. And the changes that we make in this space and in many others will protect those, those who should not have to worry about whether or not their image will be artificially exploited for the gratification of others, those who should not have to worry about whether the deviant down the street is using artificial means to accelerate their, their path uh, in, in a very negative manner. And, and it's laws like this that will help stop those things in their infancy, and it's laws like this that will protect society at large. And I thank every one of you for letting me be part of helping that get through. Well, next, our next speaker, uh, this gathering really would not be complete without hearing from the man at the front lines putting criminals away. Very simply, introducing, we'd like to introduce the, the most important parts, CWA Sanders, CWA, Commonwealth Attorney Rob Sanders, who, by the way, quietly represents the, the team. When you think about the Attorney General's office and our local Commonwealth Attorney's, Attorney's office, how fortunate we are, as tough as they are, to really keep us all safe. So, Rob Sanders. Thank you. And General Coleman gave everyone a trigger warning for the subject material. You should just know that anytime I speak, it's usually going to be a trigger warning. Um, <laughs> We had a problem in Kenton County. We had had three individuals that had child size sex dolls shift in to our jurisdiction inside of about two years. And the problem was they weren't illegal in and of themselves, yet we were three for three in catching those individuals with child sexual assault material stored on their electronic devices when we went in and did the search warrants. But we had to battle the litigation because the defense would argue that it was not illegal to have a child size sex doll. So we had actually lost one of the cases on a suppression motion. All the evidence got suppressed and a child predator went free. Uh, we were able to beat the other two suppression motions, so the other two went to prison, but we were having a problem that we shouldn't, be have, we shouldn't have to litigate this hard to prove to a court that we know that someone that has a child-sized sex doll will also be preying upon children, will also have child pornography in their possession. We know it's there, we just have to legally be able to go get it. 
So that's when I approached Representative Dietz about filing a bill that was probably the most common sense bill I've ever proposed. And I was stunned when it didn't go anywhere the first year that she sponsored the bill. But I tell you what, she called me sooner than I could call her. And she was just motivated uh, like on other, any other legislator I'd ever seen who had had their bill shot down. And she's like, we are going to get this passed the next year. And the next year, um, not only did we get uh, General Coleman on board, which made a huge difference in helping to motivate the legislature to do what was right and move this bill forward. But then we got Senator McDaniel on board, and anytime you have the ANR chair uh, carrying a bill for you in the Senate, you have a great chance of getting everyone's attention and getting their support. And it's really given us the tools we need. It's given our county police, like Detective Kyle Wallace, it's in the back, he handles these cases at the investigation stage. It's given him the tools he needs the fine detectives like the one we hear with the e-crimes dog that will go in that will find all these horrific materials and bring these people to justice, put them in jail, and give the prosecutors across the Commonwealth of Kentucky the tools we need to bury these folks under the prison where they belong. So thank you, Senator McDaniel, Senator Frohmeyer, which these two also deserve kudos because prosecutors just enjoyed the best budget we've had in my entire 18 years as Commonwealth attorney. This, for the first time, we are handing out raises as opposed to telling our employees about layoffs. And it makes a huge difference when you can retain experienced prosecutors. So thank you for the budget. But for what we're here on today, thank you, Representative Dietz and both senators for all of your support. And this is a great thing for Kentucky. Thank you. We next, uh, very exciting also, uh, the uh, Attorney General commented about uh, Jeremy Merrill, who's really the one we want to hear from as well, who's daily working on behalf of our Commonwealth and the individual who's leading the AG's effort in this area, Jeremy Merrill, as the, uh, the really Deputy Commissioner. Uh, first, let me say, I promise to be brief. Um, it is an honor and a privilege to serve in this position, so thank you for your trust in that. Uh, as I said, I'm the Deputy Commissioner of the Counter Exploitation Office. Uh, so the Attorney General tasked me with the target hardening the Commonwealth. And what that means is making it more difficult for predators to exploit our children. We accomplished this effort through our Special Victims Unit. Uh, which one of our detectives, two of our detectives, are in here today to represent that. The Special Victims Unit is part of the Kentucky Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force. Uh, they every day investigate human trafficking and child exploitation cases. In addition to that, the SVU offers technical assistance and training to any law enforcement agency in the Commonwealth. Uh, we believe that makes us a force multiplier. We also provide community outreach uh, opportunities and programs and we give educational presentations to schools parents and other public organizations you've heard a lot of stuff today about the house bill that uh, representative deed sponsored I'm going to add one more thought uh, this particular bill puts Kentucky at the technological forefront in combating child sex dolls and computer-generated CSAM which is child sex abuse material this legislation will be a model for other states moving forward uh, and as a person who was in the trenches, as a person who was supervising the unit for the controlled delivery of a child sex doll in Kenton County and my time with the state police, I'm very, very grateful for its passage. Uh, now on to why we're all really here. Um, <laughs> as you also heard, we, our newest SVU detective is pretty special. So she is one of four uh, electronic storage detection dogs in the state. Uh, Boone County has one and KSP has the other two. Uh, but Charity is a wonderful addition to our family. Uh, she is a rock star on search warrants. Uh, she can find any device that's capable of storing uh, electronic data. So think cell phones, uh, SD cards, micro SD cards, external hard drives, laptops. Uh, she can find things. Uh, micro SD cards, size of a dime, she can find that. Uh, so we're excited to have her. That comes in useful for our child exploitation cases. Uh, but any case for law enforcement that involves digital evidence. So Charity and our handler, Detective Guffey, are here today, and they've had several successful deployments uh, already for both the Department of Criminal Investigations and for other agencies. So uh, there is a request uh, for her help quite a bit. So that's another 
way where we're helping out the Commonwealth. Um, so, uh, once again, could not be more honored to serve in this role. I will turn it back over to the Attorney General for any questions. Thank you. So there's a tremendous amount of talent and expertise on my, on my left and on my right here. So let's, uh, let's open it up for any questions you may have. It, it, is, it is a dark topic, but look at the talent, look at the enthusiasm, look at the fire in the belly for tackling this, whether on the legislative front, thank you Representative Deeds and your team, uh, whether it is on the law enforcement front, and it, having this dog in the Attorney General's office, one of only four, th this was a product of creative problem solving by our new Deputy Commissioner. We, we have such talent in the fight with us, so I, I couldn't be any more honored to serve as Attorney General with talent like this. So let's just, let's open it up to any questions that you may have. Sir? Uh, yeah, well, I have a question not related to this, but uh, Pulaski County Schools is using the website and social media to advocate for voting no on Amendment 2. Has your office received any complaints against this? Where did this stand uh, as far as uh, legality goes? And supporters of Amendment 2 claim this is against the law and misuse of tax dollars. Well, this shows what a Swiss Army knife the Attorney General's office can be at, at times from one topic to another. Um, I'm, I'm familiar with the post in Pulaski County. I, I, I reviewed it earlier today. It's, it's pretty unambiguous. It's pretty crystal clear. Uh, we as an office are reviewing our team. Uh, our lawyers are reviewing the post. We're reviewing the law. If, if indeed there's a violation of state law, we, we know what the facts are. We're looking at the law. We will act with our partners accordingly. Uh, on a similar matter, uh, our office sent a letter just this week, uh, well, end of last week, to the to CREF, the Kentucky Registry of Election Finance, responding to a somewhat related request for legal representation. There is a lawsuit challenging CREF's opinion on the ability of local party committees to participate in that campaign, to expend resources to participate in that campaign. We, the Attorney General's Office, refused to represent CREF in that matter uh, because we believe that we cannot act when there is a violation of the First Amendment. And so it is, uh, it continues to become more and more interesting as we get uh, towards our uh, Commonwealth voting on, on Amendment 2. So thank you. Thank you for the question. Anything related to the subject matter here today? I have one. It's to you or lawmakers. You talked about obviously the difficult nature of this topic, but do you think that maybe the passage of this bill will lay the groundwork to address other difficult things in Kentucky? I mean, I'm sure there's other difficulties uh, legally and judicially that maybe you want to address moving forward. Well, I would challenge the premise of your question just a bit. I, I, I've been in this office for eight months, and the men and women who serve on the third floor in our General Assembly dove in the last session to tackle myriad challenges, public safety and, and otherwise. Uh, I'm the AG, so my focus is in the public safety lane. I was uh, enthused, I, I could not have found more enthusiastic partners on the third floor of our capital, not only in this space, but in providing us, us prosecutors, the budgetary resources we needed, providing the Attorney General's office the tools we needed to do things from hiring and retaining uh, the best talent to making sure that our detectives had appropriate body armor. So I, we are, as I said, this is a dark topic. We're here to celebrate a win. I will say in this space, in this CSAM space, and I will, I'll tee up some of my colleagues to speak to this. When I was in the previous role, when I served as the United States Attorney for the Western portion of our state, I felt like at times we could shut down our office and prosecute nothing but these offenses the, and be busy. Particularly during 2020, as we saw a significant uptick, and the data says, with our kids' eyes on screens and the inability to keep our eyes as parents on them at, at all times, that we saw an uptick. Uh, we saw predators coming into our homes using these devices. We saw predators using the dark web to deal with some of the most horrific conduct as an adult, as someone who spent almost 20 years in law enforcement, I've ever been exposed to. So that threat is growing. At the same time, and, and Judge Knuckleman referenced this, we exist in an environment where as little as one pill one pill can kill our sons and daughters. I, the, the legislature, these prosecutors on my left and my right uh, are looking at this challenge. They provided us through the Opioid Debatement Commission tools to tackle, to start pushing back on the treatment on the prevention side, to tackle much of the damage done by 
uh, by overdoses here in our Commonwealth. And so I'm going to I'm going to uh, let some of my colleagues speak to that. But I would just question the back to the premise of your question. These are leaders on my left and my right. They face difficult choices every day, and I couldn't be more pleased to stand with these men and women. Anything to add on that front or next next question? Yes, sir. Your Coleman, just talk to me about the importance of this push to stiffen penalties. You mentioned kind of these sweeping changes we've seen, whether it's stiffening penalties around fentanyl or also with this creating new laws to build today, just the importance of making this push, it seems like, over this last legislative session. Well, let's try to be smart about it. We go to where the threats are, and we believe that deterrence matters. We believe that punishment matters. And we believe that when you stiffen penalties in some of the areas where you do the most harm, that it has a, a larger deterrent effect when applied, and we believe that punishment is warranted. We believe that you take the most violent out of these communities, you in, incapacitate them, and, and that keeps our neighborhoods, our families, our kids safe. But I'll let some of my colleagues speak to that if they'd like to. Appreciate the question. You follow up, or you good? Just one more. Talk to me about the new four-legged detective, just the importance that she brings to maybe filling a gap or maybe just a need in the agency. Yeah, I want the Deputy Commissioner to come up and speak to this because uh, Judge Nachman and I were speaking about this earlier. Force multiplier is the term that we apply to her, our colleague, because when you're looking for a device as small as a thumb drive, you're looking for something like this or a collection of these in a house. Talk about the force multiplier being able to send that dog in that will key in, not only if it it's hidden under something if it's hidden in ceiling tiles talk about man woman detective hours used to find it sometimes we might not even put our hands on it so the most horrendous conduct imaginable this dog is a, it helps us to find it so that we can put those offenders away and away from our families but i want the deputy commissioner to do you have an anecdote that you can offer in terms of efficiency it just greatly increases the efficiency so you can picture a room that's filled with banker boxes let's say 100 banker boxes and you're looking for something that's the size of a micro SD card, that dog can alert and tell you what, which box to look in. So it saves some time there. It also assures that we don't miss anything. Because a lot of times these, these folks, these bad guys and girls will tape that SD card, as the Attorney General mentioned, to the top of a ceiling tile or underneath a desk drawer or various other places. And Charity can find that, and I think if you stick around later, we'll do a little demonstration to give you an idea of, of what we're talking about. But increases the speed, efficiency, and, and then make sure we don't miss anything on our search. So given that a demonstration's been offered, we've completely lost our audience now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I did a story recently, and it was a, she was actually just uh, graduating high school. She was still a minor. Um, and someone from another school, also a minor, had used her image to create child porn. And I guess so I'm wondering, in this leg legislation, how would you handle a minor? Do, is there a difference there? Because, because there was nothing in the jurisdiction in Ohio that, that covered this. The police couldn't do anything about it. And so with this new law, how would it handle a situation like that? Because young people do stupid things. They do, and I'd like for Rob Sanders to join me here in a second. Uh, prosecutorial discretion is a, is a concept that we look at every case uh, uniquely, every case and the facts uh, on their face, and so it is, it is, it is hard hypothetically to address uh, what that scenario might look like. But I think uh, Mr. Sanders can speak to, as we're continuing to see across the Commonwealth, uh, kids' use of images, kids' use of this devices, and it, it's not rare for me in speaking to a Rotary Club or a group of kids to pull this out. And I'm always talking about the, the, the risk of one pill can kill, but I seldom miss the opportunity to, to point this out and say this is the most dangerous item in your home for myriad reasons to include uh, the fact that once those images exist, they're, they're durable, they're extant forever. And these, we have a new generation that doesn't fully appreciate the impact of, of what that looks like. Uh, and so we, we need to increase awareness. I will tell you, not addressing your question on all fours, we have to do a better job increasing awareness of what those risks are, that, that there could potentially be penalties, about what those outcomes can be to, uh, to young people if they're, if they're playing around with these devices. But Mr. Sanders, you may have something you want to offer that. The answer to your question is very nuanced and would be very fact-specific given uh, the situation that prosecutors would be confronted with. 
But the short, the shortest answer is that more importantly, when an adult does that, and we have plenty of adults that have taken a child's image, a, ch a photo of a child's head, and put it onto pornographic images and started creating child porn in that fashion, it would cover that without a doubt. Um, and it would allow us to take that person off the streets. It would allow us to search the residents, search their digital devices, find all the other child pornography that they will surely have. Um, but in the situation that you address, uh, where it is a child who is perpetrating these acts, it would de depend on a number of different issues in the case, uh, whether it be the child's age, are they close to 18, will they be 18 before the courts can do anything with them. In Kentucky, child cases, child defendant cases, juvenile defendant cases start in the county attorney's jurisdiction. They're the ones that handle juvenile court. It could stay there. Uh, if the child was close to turning 18, it could be transferred to adult court to be tried as an adult if those circumstances were appropriate. More importantly, however, because the AI-generated child pornography is now child pornography, even if it's something generated by AI as opposed to um, an actual image of a child, it can be addressed. Now, most importantly, it doesn't matter nearly as much whether it's addressed in juvenile court or whether it's addressed in adult court. What matters the most is that it is addressed and a stop is put to it before anything gets out of control, before any children um, make stupid decisions or unfortunate decisions based upon what they're now confronted with. It's something that gives tools to both Commonwealth attorneys and county attorneys to address the situation instead of a defense attorney just arguing that this is an AI-generated image so it's not illegal. So I hope that answers your question, even though I think a specific situation like you're talking about um, would require a lot more details. Thank you. We got time for one more, I think. Yes, sir. Is there any um, publicly available data or figures that can kind of speak to the scope of the problem? And if so, where can we find it? And we can certainly follow up with that. The National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, NICMIC, who is a, a nonprofit and a quasi governmental entity, is a great resource or a great partner as we deal with uh, the gravity of this threat, the sheer scope of this threat. Uh, they're based in Alexandria. Their website is a great resource, I think, uh, for the National Institutes for Justice puts out statistics, but I think in terms of sheer efficiency, NICMIC is probably the, the best uh, the best resource for you as to the gravity of the, of the threat. It, I, I'm loath to offer what your takeaways should be, but from, uh, from where we stand, if, if there are two things that, that uh, you're sharing with your audience, one of them is just despite the, the, the challenge, the darkness, the divisiveness, that, that we have some incredible leaders in this Commonwealth that are willing to step into it, like Representative Deeds, uh, like Senator McDaniel, like, uh, uh, like our Commonwealth Attorney, Ms. Chandris, who, who uh, originated this idea, that the, the need to tackle this. But the second maybe is more important, and that is the gravity of this threat. The, the fact that as parents, the gravity of, of, of what this can do, the fact that there are predators, this is not the prosecutor beating the podium, this is the reality of a dad. There are predators, we can lock our doors, we can turn on ADT, we can pull out the Ruger and put it on the, on the bedside table, but if your kids are on these devices, you are throwing open the doors to your home to the world. Not just to Northern Kentucky, not just to the Commonwealth, you are throwing open the doors of your home to the world. And I cannot emphasize enough the need to be diligent. It's, it's impossible to stay looking over your kids' shoulders at any time. It's a, it's a real challenge. But I would encourage you, there are great resources out there. Uh, the Attorney General's Office has resources in terms of educationally. The uh, Operation Parent is a great nonprofit based just down the road at I-71, has some great resources on how to engage with your kids, how to talk about this stuff earlier than we should. Uh, but I would also, Nick, Mick, National Center for Missing and Exploited Children is a, is a great resource as well. I just uh, I thank you for covering this incredibly important topic. Thank you for coming. Godspeed.